Oh hi there, welcome back to my channel, it's great to have you back here once again. But if it's your first time checking out the show, you know what to do, smash that like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below with your thoughts, feelings and suggestions. But yo, what the hell is going on with Whitney Cummings? Can someone tell me? Does somebody know? Can somebody offer some kind of insight? What is going on with this lady? Why has she suddenly done a complete 360 in terms of her online personality? In terms of some of the stuff that she speaks about? In terms of just how she presents herself on the internet? What is going on there? I might be in the minority, but I really enjoyed some of Whitney Cummings' early podcast appearances. I especially enjoyed her on The Fire and the Kid when they were back on Fox. I enjoyed her appearances on the Joe Rogan experience. I think she's a little bit neurotic, but that actually is part of her charm. I think she had some really deep and insightful conversations. She got me thinking about things I hadn't necessarily thought about because guess what? I'm not a woman. So it was great to get that insight from a comedian uh, a writer a producer at that level who was able to kind of divulge and be introspective and talk about the struggles and the pains that they've gone through throughout their career and of course she's funny as fuck right makes complete sense but over the years something has happened it feels like ever since Chris D'Elia and Brian Callen got cancelled she's turned into this weird person online and I can't really get my finger on what is actually is going on you know finger probably is a bit weird thing to say at the right time like, you know, he knows that it's a bit weird but you know but you have a pause there but yeah regardless it just feels a little bit strange like, what the hell is going on with Whitney Cummings and then I stumbled across this video courtesy of the homeless cats that really really kind of drives home the point as to something has definitely changed. This is a little clip taken from Whitney Cummings' Instagram story showing some skit or some intermission or some entertainment that she provides for her fans when she's on stage. It's fairly odd, it's fairly strange, and it doesn't really resonate with me in terms of the kind of content that I expect or that I'm used to when it comes to Whitney Cummings or what she presented to be herself. Something's definitely changed. I'm not too sure what it is, but here's some evidence of it. <laughs> I assume that guy saying nothing is basically letting it be known but you know by his reaction that he's a homosexual that gets no pleasure out of having his face smushed between a couple of bosoms <laughs> And it just continues. Is this, is this the next day or is this the same day? I'm assuming it's the next day because they've got a different outfit on. So it's just a thing that they clearly keep doing because it gets a good crowd reaction, you know? One thing you're going to learn about comedians, if something works, they're going to keep doing it again and again and again and again. Anyway, enough of that shit. You get the drift. So what do you reckon has definitely changed in Whitney Cummings for her to kind of do this 360 and start being this person now? Nothing wrong with it, but what do you reckon changed? My theory is that something happened in reaction to the whole Chris D'Elia and Brian Callum thing where she tried to reclaim who she was as an entertainer, reclaim who she was as a female voice, something that she kind of didn't really like speaking about too often and something that she kind of tried to push to one side if i'm not if i'm not mistaken in the comedy store documentary she does mention something about not wanting to have or not wanting to wear scantily clad clothes because she wanted to be taken seriously on the stage which is obviously a problem in itself but still she was very um i thought sensitive and um, aware of how she presented herself and how that would have a direct correlation to how people viewed her actual material there was a real correlation between those two things but something has definitely changed in there we don't know really what it is i'm no psychologist so i'm not going to psychoanalyze her too much but in my sense i think where i kind of got off the train and sort of we had a bit of displeasure and distaste for whitney cummings it definitely came as a reaction to the whole brain callum crystal affair 
Now, their allegations are, of course, their allegations. They're very serious. We don't really have a resolution as to what's actually happened there. We've got some allegations from people. We've got, you know, Chris Delira and Brian Callan's version of events. And then we're left as an audience to basically make our mind up as to what we think is true or not. But one thing that really kind of, you know, left a sour taste in my mouth was the fact that these guys, you know, purported to be best friends, especially in the case of Chris Delira and Whitney Cummings. She said numerous times on her podcast appearances with Chris Delira, which she you know promptly deleted from her library because she didn't want to be smudged or besmirched with his name and she did it pretty quickly as soon as the allegations came out she was very quick to kind of get them completely scrubbed from her instagram completely scrubbed from her podcast feed didn't really give her a colleague or somebody that she deemed to be a best friend a chance to basically say his piece or to basically talk to him in private who knows what happened behind the scenes but she was fairly quick in terms of deleting those two episodes and that really didn't really sit right with me at that time because they purported to be best friends they purported to hold each other up they were speaking about stuff like counter culture and the need for people to stand up for each other and in the moment one person gets in a little bit of turmoil don't get me wrong the allegations are serious um and no one wants to put their career on the line their career on the line for somebody else especially if you definitely had no idea but i'm maybe in a minority here but i just can't accept or believe that these guys had no idea what their colleagues were getting up to behind the scenes it's just literally impossible for me anyway comedians are the most gossipy you know bitchy community of entertainers that ever existed in the history of the world if there's something that you're doing you don't want people to know don't be a stand-up comedian because people will find out eventually now whether or not they pull you to one side and tell you you're bugging out and that you need to stop doing x y and z is another thing but to suggest that no one had any idea that one of these comics allegedly might have enjoyed the company of very underage girls or girls that might have looked very young or if the suggestion that one of the other comedians might have been a little bit too pushy in his advances with some women and none of them had any idea i refuse to believe that was true so essentially when you come and try to paint it as if she had no idea what was happening deleted all the you know podcasts from her feed and essentially put out a statement that admonished and basically dismissed all those years of friendship and working together with Chris D'Elia in an effort to present her as the savior. And then when people then pushed back at that statement, if I remember correctly, she then started playing the victim and started doing some woe is me tweet sort of stuff and it just rubbed me up the wrong way and i think if i was a stand-up comedian and i got in some trouble or if i was standing comedian just watching the absolute car crash that was the crystal Lear affair i would have been really really annoyed at how whitney cummins dealt with things you don't need to come out and back the guy but you could stay silent you could just remain to be quiet you could just opt to remain to be quiet in public and maybe you know chastise your friend in private or just don't say anything at all that is also an option you may or you may owe your friends that much but she didn't think that was something that she owed her friend fair cool everyone's safe to do whatever the hell they want but it's something that didn't really sit right with me at the time and i kind of you know put me off enjoying any bits of her content and since then i think we've seen her boobs more time and i've seen the entire time that i've known of whitney cummings she changes her hair to every color in the rainbow and it's just a mess it just looks like a mess and maybe it's just a consequence of working in hollywood even with somebody as successful and accomplished and rich as Whitney Cummings is, eventually that Hollywood cycle, that Hollywood machine is going to make you do things that you probably wouldn't think you'd ever do in order to stay relevant, in order to keep your name popping, in order to make sure that you're considered for certain jobs, in order to make sure people know that you're still alive, whatever it may be. And I imagine it's probably 10 times as harder for women in the industry. You know, you just only have to look at some of the biggest films in Hollywood at the moment now, or you only have to look at the Hollywood industry as of late. Only recently have we seen maybe older women on the screens. For the most part, it was a thing where if you reached the age of 32 and up, you essentially regarded as a old age and they kind of in with the old out with the old in with the new so maybe that's a natural reaction to the industry and the way it's set up but either way something is definitely off and something is definitely weird and i'm not sure what's going on there but there's definitely a change have you noticed anything from Whitney Cummings that you've kind of thought is a bit odd or am i just reading too much into it and just leave her do whatever the hell she wants to do let me know in the comments down below i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions